So in today's video we're going to look at five different stitches for stump work embroidery. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. My name is Sarah and just before we go any further I'd like to thank a few people for their super thanks for supporting this channel. So that's to Kay, Angie and Judy. Thank you very much. Um, all of the donations from the super thanks um, have gone on some new lights for the studio. So these are hopefully be a little bit more energy efficient and a little bit nicer for me to work under so I'm not so hot. Um, so that's where the money has gone. So thank you very much um, for that. It is really appreciated. So if you see my other stump work videos, we were making stump work dragonflies and I started one in that project and I've actually finished it now and I just wanted to show you that one before I go into the stitches. So this is it here, got this camera here. So this one was a little bit more of a contemporary one. The first one that I did was a little bit more realistic and I just wanted to have a little bit of fun with this one and play with the background a little bit and the dragonfly as well. It's not very realistic dragonfly. I'll put it under this camera so that you can see that a little bit more clearly. So there he is. So I just put some gold lame fabric behind here. It can be a little bit bright in itself. So it's nice just to tone it down a little with a little piece of lace on top of that there. And I'd actually painted the lace in um, a blue watercolor just to take some of the white off it and sort of blend the dragonfly into the background a little bit. Um, I did this body in that video. So we've seen how I did that. And these are the wings that have been attached. So I've done those in gold, put a little bit of detail on the top one there put his eyes on as well and then I've just added in some spangles if you've been watching my videos for a while you know how much I love spangles just a little bit of sparkle there and then if I just turn it hopefully you can see how three-dimensional he is so he is finished and I will put pictures of that up on the community page as well if you want to have a close look at that dragonfly. And I did also put a call out to you to make some dragonflies and I would show them in um, a little gallery. And we've had lots of dragonflies coming in. They're really amazing. Thank you to everybody who sent me a dragonfly. And I was going to slip them into this video and we were going to show them throughout the video. But then I decided that they were worthy of a video of their own, really. I didn't want them to get lost in, in the stitches that we're going to do today. So I am going to make a video just with your dragonflies in. So if you're still making them, you've got a couple of days to, to get them in to me. I'll leave an email address in the description below this video if you want to send me a picture of your dragonfly to show in our dragonfly gallery video. Before we have a look at our first stitch and our five stitches for stump work, I'm going to tell you about this week's video sponsor. So I do a lot of my YouTube video embroidery sampling and stitching in the evening in the house. I'm usually sitting in this chair, usually with a ginger cat on my lap. And I find that domestic lighting isn't really good enough um, to do the stitching under. And I've spoken before about how the importance um, of having a really good light. So either natural daylight or artificial to get the best from your embroidery. And for the past few weeks, I have been trying out this high definition light from Serious Readers. So Serious Lights come in a range of three styles, each of which are customizable. And I chose the high definition lightweight in Heritage White. There is a heavyweight cordless option, but I chose the lightweight one because there are plenty of sockets next to where I work um, and the colour matches my living room quite nicely. So let me show you how this lamp works. So let's start here. So this is a flexible arm. So this is a staple arm. So this will stay wherever you position your light. Like so. And then you've got more movement here. So the head of the light will go 360 degrees all the way around like so and you've also got a 120 degree adjustment on the handle here so I'll go up like so and down like that. You can turn the light on with the switch on the handle here like so. You can adjust the brightness of it with a wheel on the top so I can go brighter with it and I can turn it the other way and it dims and I've got another adjustment on that well on that as well that's here so I can change the beam width on it so I can make a small beam and I can turn it to make a large beam depending on how much light I want on my work. So I really like this light and um, I love the flexibility of the arm here and the fact that you can turn it up and around and it goes around that way and it goes up and down and this will just stay wherever you put it. I am a little bit of a fidget when I, <laughs> I sit on the sofa and I stitch so it's nice to be able to move it whatever position I'm in. 
the adjustable beam and the fact that you can dim the bulb as well is really helpful. The light changes a lot inside the house. We've got artificial lighting, sometimes the TV's on, sometimes the sun's out. So to be able to change those things is really useful. I did find sometimes the highest beam was a little bit too bright. If I'm working on a white fabric, it can glare a little bit. So to be able to turn that down was really handy. One little feature I really like about this lamp is that you turn it on and off on the handle here so it's all within easy reach. I've had other lights before and you have to get down on the floor and you have to look for the little switch on the cable which is not really convenient when you've got lots of <laughs> embroidery things on your lap. So you can just reach with your hand and you can do that easily on the handle and you can also dim it easily as well with the same hand there so that's really accessible. And the daylight wavelength technology is a real must for embroiderers. Um, I'm sitting here, I'm choosing my colours. I've got lots of colours that are very similar. It's really important I can see the difference between them. And that's probably one of the main things when you're choosing a light um, is do the colours look different, the lights changing, as I've mentioned. So it's really important to have that technology to be able to see the different colours that I'm stitching. So Serious Readers also sent me this little compact light here. Now this light doesn't have the daylight wavelength technology, but it still is really great light. It's really good as well if you don't want a floor standing one and you want to have one on a table beside you. And in fact, Jonathan uses this one all of the time for his hobbies. So if you would like a serious light, we have a special offer for you. Using the link in the description below this video, go to the Serious Readers website where you can select your light and you can customise it. And if you use the offer code SR202, you will receive a free compact light worth £150 and free shipping. So let's get back to some stitching. So this first stitch is a really essential stitch if you want to do any stump work. It comes into stump work so much and in lots of various different guises. So this one is definitely one that you really need to get your head round and that is the buttonhole stitch or blanket stitch. We can use both um, same stitch but just slightly different in the way we'll put them together. I'll go over that. So I'm just going to show you the stitch first and then just one thing that you can use um, use it for in stump work. So I'm just going to start this end here. That little knot to waist knot, I'm going to stitch over that and we'll cut that off when we get to it. So all we do with a buttonhole is we come up at the end where we want to start. We take a little stitch above it and slightly to the right, we make a loop. We come up inside the loop like so and then we just pull that stitch away to tension it and that's all there is to it. So I'll do a blanket stitch first. Now blanket stitch is that stitch but the stitches are wider apart. So if you're practicing this, if you've never done this stitch before, practice it like this so you can see what you're doing. We do have videos on this stitch um, in more detail. So if you do want to check that one out, you can do. I'll put a link up for that one. And just up inside the loop, make sure you tension it that way, not that way, otherwise you lose your stitch formation. And then when you've got quite good at practicing that, try them a little bit closer together because this is where they'll come into their own for stump work projects. So just right next to each other with no gap in it at all. Just practice getting that neat and tidy. Practice your tension, make sure that that's nice and even. And I'm doing this quite large initially, you can do it any size you like to practice it on. So you can see what I'm doing, but we're going to go really small with it in a minute. As you'll see this in so many different stump work projects used in so many ways. So if you can just have this so you know what you're doing without thinking about it. And I'll just do one more. And then to finish the stitch off, I'm just going to come up inside the loop. So each stitch is attached to the previous stitch. If I don't finish that off, that's loose and that's going to come undone. So we just go down the other side of that stitch there. And we just pull that to finish it off. Now I can cut my knot off because I've stitched over that on the back. Now I'll stop that stitch there and I'm actually going to start with another thread because I used three strands of a stranded cotton there. You don't have to use three strands, you can use anything you like but that's quite good so you can see the stitch that I'm using. But this is often used um, really small and we're going to go over some wire this time. So I'm going to switch it down to just one strand, so just a very fine strand. You can see now why you need to have a little bit of practice at this because now it's going to get teeny tiny. So I've got a little bit of wire here. This is just paper covered wire, it's 26 gauge. This is quite good for stump work projects. It's quite small, so um, just take it easy with this. It's exactly the same, it's just very small. So make sure you've got some good light to use. I'm just going to hold that in place. So I've come up underneath the wire, I'm going to go down over the top of the wire. That's exactly the same as we did over here. I'm going to make that loop. 
and I'm going to come up inside the loop but on the other side of the wire. I'll do that again, don't worry. Once I've got one stitch in place that will hold it down. So I'm going to go over the top of the wire. We make a loop and come up inside the loop on the other side of the wire. So I'm just working that buttonhole stitch over the top of the wire. It's going to hold the wire down. Notice that I said I'm doing buttonhole stitch now. So that's when the stitches are right next close to each other. Blanket stitches when they're wide apart. Buttonhole is when they're close together. Otherwise the stitch is formed in exactly the same way. So up on the inside of the loop and the bottom of the wire over the top of the wire make the loop inside the loop come up on the bottom of the wire so you're just doing this stitch around this wire so i'll go along a little bit further and then i'll show you what that looks like so i've just done a few more stitches there now it is really fiddly this size which is why you need that practice um, and try and make sure that your stitches are right next to each other so that you can't see the wire underneath. Now I've used a different coloured wire so that you can clearly see what I'm doing but if you were doing this um, for an actual project try and match the colour of your thread to the colour of wire so if you can just see through your stitches you haven't got a really bright colour showing through. Um, I just want to show you um, an instance where this would be used. We have already looked at it already. So it's back to the little dragonfly here and this is how the wings have been done here. So this is a wired edge here. You can see how that's quite stiff and that moves there like so. And then I've done this buttonhole stitch over the wire in a gold metallic thread this time um, and then you cut it out and you can bend the wire to shape. So this stitch is really really great if you want to cut something out and you want to shape it and you want to have it freestanding. So wings are great. Um, uh, thing to use this technique for flowers if you want to make flowers and leaves that stand up from the surface this wired buttonhole um, stitch is just the job so really really good one to learn so the next stitch that I want to show you is a variation of the buttonhole that we have just done and we are going to do some buttonhole bars now so I'll show you how to do that here so I'm going to stick with my stranded cotton for this. I've got three strands so that you can clearly see what I'm doing. Um, now this one's important if you're left-handed and right-handed. So if you're right-handed, start on the left and we're going to go right and then left. If you're left-handed, start on the right-hand side and go the opposite way. I think you'll find that much easier. I'm right-handed so I'm going this way. So I've come up where I want the end of my bar to sit. I'm going down on the other end. Pull that all the way through. So if you're left-handed, you've gone that way instead. And then I'm going to come back up on this side the end of that stitch there and we're going to do some buttonhole around that so this thread really replaces that wire that we looked at in the previous one and then I'm just going to work it around that thread now we don't go through the fabric with this one we're going to stay on top of the fabric so there's my loop that I've come up inside just going to pull it to the end and pull it tight if you're left-handed turn your loop that way and go along right to left um, inside your loops exactly the same way to form the stitch just swap everything over and these stitches are all going to sit next to each other like they did before just make sure that that needle doesn't catch the fabric so it's going to sit on top just tensioning it away pulling them all up next to each other now the good thing with this one is you can just pull them up so they're next to each other so you're not going to get any gaps in this one don't pull it too tight just want a nice even tension all the way across there we know we're not going to get any gaps because we can just push them right up next to each other. You can see that bar starting to form now. We're nearly at the end, so just a few more stitches. Try and keep your tension nice and even. Ooh, just got it caught around the wire. And again. There we go. And then when you get to the end, just take your needle back down at the end of your stitch, like so. So there is a buttonhole bar. So you can see that it's attached to the fabric, but it just moves. You can put things under it and you can overlap them. And I'll show you that in a second. So it's just sort of freestanding. It's still attached to the fabric, but it's not sewn into the fabric. So let's just do one more variation of that because you can just keep going with this and do different things. So again, up where you want to start, down where you want the end of it to sit. Pull that all the way through. 
back up to where you want to start. And we're going to start this one in the same way. I'm just going to bend that wire out of the way for now because it's getting caught on there. So underneath, in the loop, pull it tight. And I'm going to do a few of these because we're going to make this one a twisted buttonhole bar. So after I've been around a couple of times, it gets this natural twist in it. So now I'm just going to take the needle under that loop there. I'm not going to come up in the loop of the thread. I'm just going to go all the way around and that twists it round. That twists the stitches round. And if we just carry on with our buttonhole stitch, do a few more of those and you'll begin to see what happens. Take the needle underneath that thread, but not through the loop. Do it slowly. Hopefully you can see what's happening there. And that's just pulling the stitches around and it starts to twist around there. And you'll get the full effect if I get to the end. So I shall just quickly stitch to the end. You can go a bit slower than me. I've done a few of these now. I just want to show you what that looks like. Let's get one more in there, I think. Like so, down at the end, like so, and you can see that that action of taking it under without going through the loop has just twisted the buttonhole around the bar, so it's just made a more um, decorative bar, if you like. And just one more variation of that one, because this one is the one we can do really pretty things with it. So I'm just going to leave a loop this time, and if you want to, you can just use a pin just to hold that in place while we stitch around it. And I'm going to come back at where I started, so exactly the same stitch as before. It's a little bit hard to get the needle, just make sure you don't catch the fabric. And we're going to work the buttonhole around that again. So when you get to the pin, you can just take that out, or if you want to, you can just move it around, have a little bit of control over that. And we're just going to carry on with that right to the end. And you can do something really beautiful with this version of the buttonhole bar. And I'll show you that in a second when I get to the end. I can take that pin out now. Last few stitches. Like so, down at the end. And you can see that that's made a little buttonhole bar loop. And I just want to show you what we can do with those buttonhole bar loops. So this little lovely rose here is made with exactly that stitch, those little loops that we've just done. And all I've done is just lay them over each other. So I've started with a little triangle of them, just overlap each end of the triangle. I've got one stitch there, overlaps the other one like so, and that one overlaps here. And you just keep going round in a circle and I've changed the threads. And this is just all of that all made from those buttonhole bars just overlap change the colors and i got a beautiful rose so these stitches are really worth learning just um for themselves because you can do so many things with them just got a little flower there as well look i've done a real loop for this one rather than coming and leaving a gap we just come up and down next to each other and you can make almost a closed loop for this and you can make little flowers with it so a really really great one to learn so for the third stitch, I want to show you how to do some leaves. So these are going to be three dimensional leaves that do stand up from the surface. So we're going to do woven picots. So I'm going to stitch these in a purlay thread. There's no reason why I'm changing the threads, particularly just so you can see how different threads look for different stitches. Do um, have a little practice of your own so that you can see what they look like because they will look different depending on what you use. Now for this one, you're going to need a pin. Now I recommend the thinnest finest pin that you can find for this one. Um, so I've just got a little dressmaking pin here. If you've got some lace pins or something like that, they'd be perfect. So this is the bottom of the leaf here. This is how wide it's going to be at the bottom. And this is the tip. I'm going to put the needle in, the pin in, sorry, at the tip. Like so, just catch it in the fabric underneath so it doesn't move. And then all we're going to do is wrap that around the top of the pin. You can see my leaf shape forming already. So down there, which will be the width of the bottom of the leaf. And we're going to weave this back and forth. So we need another stitch in there. Now to weave, you need an odd number of stitches. So we're going to use three for this one. 
So I'm coming up in the middle and we're going to go around the pin again. So you can see now my three little stitches that we can weave in and out over and under and over and under. So I'm just going to carry straight on with that and start weaving. So it doesn't really matter which you start with. I'm going to go underneath that first one, over the middle one and underneath the last one. Make sure you don't catch the thread and you don't catch the um, fabric as well. Now it's a little bit tricky just to get the tension going in the first one so make sure you pull it tight around the pin and then you pull it up. So I'm pulling it up and I'm pulling it to the left again if you're left-handed you might want to start the other way. doesn't really matter because we're going to go back and forth but sometimes just starting it can be a bit tricky. And then we've come under this one here so now we're going to go over that one and under the middle one and over the right hand one. So just make sure you go alternately. If you don't, it will just fall out. It will become apparent pretty quickly if you've gone the wrong way with it. So we're just weaving. Just pull that tight. So, And I'm actually pushing my finger up underneath. If you can have it in a frame and have two hands to work, that's really helpful. This is the versatile table clamp frame that I'm using. So I've got two hands free. You only need one, by the way. I've got two, so it stays still under the camera. But one frame will definitely help you because now I can push up underneath with my finger. And I can easily get my needle under there. So under that, over the middle one, under the left hand one. And if I just use the needle just to push the stitches up, that makes sure my weaving is nice and tight. And that's all I'm going to do is go back and forth with my weaving. Make sure that they're nice and tight next to each other. You don't want to pull in too much. You don't want your leaf to be like, <laughs> you can't breathe kind of a leaf. So um, relax on your tension, but you do want to push the stitches up towards the top of the pin. So just push them up that way. But as left to right goes, just a nice even tension on those stitches so that you don't pull your leaf all out of shape. So I'm just going to do that all the way to the bottom. So I'm on my last row. Now if you find that the needle is catching on your thread or your fabric, there's um, a couple of things you can do. You can either just swap to a tapestry needle, which is a blunt end and then that won't poke through your fabric, or you can just turn your needle around and use the eye of the needle to go through and you'll find that does a similar thing. Just be careful, don't poke your finger. <laughs> the sharp end um, but you can do that if you're finding that it is just catching so go as far down as you can to finish off your weaving I'm just going to go once more I think just get as many stitches in as you can as many as much weaving as many weaving as much <laughs> much weaving as you can I'm going to stop in the middle and I can take that through to the back and I can finish that off on the back. And then if I take the pin out, you'll see what happens with this. And this is why you need a fine pin because it's going to actually make a hole in the end of that. And if you use a big thick one, you get a big thick hole. So take the pin out and look, my leaf standing free of the surface. So these are really, really cute, these leaves. And then you can mould it and stitch it down at the end if you want to and give it a really fancy shape. So that's the principle. I just want to quickly show you two more so how to do a wide one so we'll need our pin back again so that's the tip of my leaf so we're going to go around the tip down the other side as before but this is really wide at the bottom and if I only do a three weave leaf then I'll get big wide parts in it which isn't great so if you want to do five remember it's got to be an odd number to be able to weave around it so around the top and down just inside so you can see what I'm doing here. I've made a sort of smaller triangle inside. And then I'm going to come up in the middle. And then this is the same as before. That goes around the top of the pin. And there I've got five um, stitches to weave around. And then I can just start over, under, over, under, over, under again and back and forth and back and forth. So if you've got one with a wider base, um, that's definitely a good way to approach that one. And then I just want to show you one more version of that. So you can do these long and thin as well. So you can get pretty versatile with these. So I'm actually going to do this one sideways. If you put a clump of these together, you could have one, one out to the side. You can make a little group of them and you can mold them and shape them. You can really get really inventive with these. So this is going to be a long, thin one. So round my pin, back down there. So you can see how narrow this is at the bottom. We still need three stitches so that we can weave around it. So one more around the pin and then I can start weaving. Now obviously this is fairly 
close together here so just be super careful with your weaving maybe swap to the tapestry needle at this day so you don't pick up that thread there and then I'm just going to show you what these look like on a finished piece so this is a piece that I did in Portland if you did any of those classes with me hello to you um, we did this um, quite a few years ago now and we did a, a stunt work urn on some um, needlepoint canvas um, but I just want to show you these leaves so this is exactly what we've just done and see how long they are so um, just one thing I do need to mention is it's quite hard to start and stop your thread when you're weaving. So if you're going to do a big long one, give yourself just a little bit extra thread. You don't need meters and meters of it, but just a little bit extra to make sure that you don't run out on your leaf because it's a little bit awkward to start and stop with that. Um, but you can see them here and I've just attached them at the end and you can twist them over as well. This one is twisted round here. So just curled that one in. You can get really expressive with these. There's another one there look and there's one under there and you can see how they stand proud from the surface so a lot of fun these leaves um, and you can make lots of different shapes with them now this is a really good stitch we do have a whole video on how to do this stitch it is a little bit complicated so if you're interested in this and want to do it in more depth do check that one out it's turkey rug stitch and we'll put a link up for that one but I'm just going to run through it here because it's a great stitch if you want to create some texture and again I'll show you how um, we can use that when um, we've had a look at the stitch so I'm going to use um, a cruel wool for this one. Now I have changed this one for a reason. Um, the wool, when you do turkey rug stitch, when you cut the, the rug, and it, it, it's called turkey rug stitch because it looks like a Turkish rug, you get that pile um, in the wool. So if you do it in wool, you get that nice fluffiness and you'll get that pile. You can do it in other um, materials, in other, in other types of thread. I've done it in cotton and you get quite a different look. So you can make some really interesting things with other threads as well but this is a good one just to show you with and this is one of the only stitches few stitches I know that actually starts on the top and you don't need to fasten the end somehow so remember that the end of it stays on the top so I'm going to show you the stitch now um, now if I wanted my row to start there I'm going to start my stitch just to the right of that again if you're left-handed you can go the other way just reverse everything round when I go left to right you go right to left so I'm just going to take that down so no knot on the end and that little piece of thread there is going to be part of the pile of the stitch and then I'm going to show you a single stitch then I'll show you how you can put the stitches together just got my finger on that so again some sort of frame to hold it is helpful with this stitch you don't have to but um, I'll come up to the left I'm going to go down just to the right of that little gap in between sort of a needle width in between each one and before I pull that all the way through I'm just going to leave that loop facing upwards I come back up inside next to that first stitch I'll do it again don't worry <laughs> so what you get ooh, a little bit of thread underneath so what you get is two stitches coming down and a loop over the top and when I pull that tight that loop pulls tight and it stitches over the two ends of this thread and what you can do now so you can see the stitch you can cut that off so that is a single turkey rug stitch so there's my two ends held down by the stitch over the top so if I want to do another one I can do that next to it remember it starts from the top hold that down leave that little gap so you can come up to one side of it down to the other side leaving a little gap the loop at the top come up in the middle let go of the loop and the loop will hold those two in place now you can carry on and do the whole row like that you don't have to cut between every one if you don't want to so down in the middle up to the left down to the right back up in the middle anyone who's done this stitch with me in a class will probably be smiling now that's a little turkey rug stitch mantra down in the middle up to the left make the loop down to the right back up in the middle let go of the loop pull it tight it does take a while to get the hang of this one don't try and do this one while you're watching the TV you need to concentrate until you get the hang of it till you get this mantra in your head down in the middle up to the left down to the right and you can see I'm holding everything out of the way so I can see what I'm doing back up in the middle let go of the loop I'll just do one more and then we'll cut it ok 
Okay, so you can either leave the loops as they are if you like the loops. If you want those loop loops to be nice and even, you could do that over something so you get the same length every time. But if you want to get the Turkish rug look, all I'm going to do now, scissors in each loop, pull it straight up, cut through it, straight up, cut through it. And then you can see they've all got those little tails. And then if you just want to trim them off, you can trim them. So they're all the same length. Like so. This does happen when you start cutting turkey rugs. So you have a little bit of sticky tape to hand and you can just lift off all the fibres because they don't get everywhere once you start cutting this. So that is a single row of Turkish rug stitch. Now I've done another row over here because I want to show you how to do more than one row and this bit is really important. So if you're going to fill something in in this stitch and make it nice and fuzzy and fluffy, you need to work in a very particular order. So you need to do the um, bottom row um, first and work on top of it. If I now done that at the top of my shape and I want to stitch underneath, I've got to hold all that way out, all those threads out of the way and stitch another row under there and it gets in a terrible mess. So you need to think about how you work it. So you work the bottom one first and then we're going to work over the top of that one for the next one. And you'll notice as well, I haven't cut these loops. So you can work a lot of this in one go and then you can cut it all at the end. You can cut it as you go if you like, but I think it's better just to work all the stitch and then you can start to cut and you can shape it because you can sort of sculpt this stitch and you can um, have it chamfer off at the edge so you can get these right nice curves on it you can do all sorts of things with this so I suggest you stitch it all first and then cut at the end and the brilliant thing about this stitch is if you cut something you don't want to or something isn't right or is a little bare bit and you haven't got enough stitches in you can just go back and put a single stitch in really really easy to fix Likewise, you can just pull a single stitch out if you need to. So this is a great one if you get a bit lost and somehow you'll end up on the back. If you end up on the back, you've gone wrong, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> it starts and finishes on the top. So you can just see now what I'm doing. You might have guessed what this might be good for from the colours that I'm using. And you can see how I'm holding it down with my finger. Each, lay, um, each row is sitting on top of the previous one. So do think about that if you're going to do a group of this. We'll just go to the end and then I'll just show you what that looks like when it's cut. Okay, last stitch. Um, one thing I should mention about this is it uses a lot of thread. So keep these as small as you can um, if you're going to cut them anyway because you will get through a fair amount of thread with this. So there's my two rows. So now you can start to cut if you wanted to. If I was going to fill in a shape, I'd just keep going with that. Do cut them separately. If you just try and go straight in across, then things are going to go wrong. So try and cut all the loops separately. Missed one there. And then you can trim it. Take your time trimming it, get some tape, get rid of all those fluffy little bits there. And then you can start to see, oh look, I've got a big long black one there. Let's cut that one off. And you can start to see how that stitch works. So let's just show you quickly what that looks like when you do a whole piece of it. So here's my little bumblebee from my Critters on Canvas piece. I showed you this piece in the, our introduction to stump work. Um, and here is the turkey rug stitch. And you can see how fluffy he looks. He's got a little bit squashed over the time because he's a bit old now. Um, but I started at the bottom here and layered on top. That will give you your um, pile going in the right direction. Otherwise, he's going to look like he's been scared or something like that. So layer on top, change the colours as and when. And then you can cut to shape. So I've cut it short around the sides to give him a nice round shape there. And then done something slightly different for his head. So I've gone up to here for his head and then change the head. So that's what one thing that you can do with a turkey rug stitch. And you can just see those wired shapes here on him as well. That was the first one we looked at. So you can see how these things are starting to come together now to make your stump work pieces. So the last of the five I want to show you is a really, really cute one. Um, and that is raised leaf stitch. 
So for this stitch, you're going to need something to help you. So you're going to need something like this. Now we've had these ones cut in clear plastic so that you can see through and see what I'm doing. You can use an old credit card, an old store card, a little bit of plastic packaging off some food, anything like that that's quite stiff. It doesn't matter if it's got a little bit of bend in it because we're going to stitch over that to create some loops. Um, the size of it will change the size of your leaf. So the smaller the piece that you have, the smaller the leaf will be. So I've got three sizes there, small, a medium and a large. That's going to make quite a large leaf. So I guess that's probably about, middle one's probably about a centimetre um, <clears throat> in width. So a little bit smaller and a little bit larger. So that kind of a size in something fairly sturdy that you can stitch over. So I've just swapped my thread now. I'm using a Burma Lana thread, which is half wool and half acrylic. So you get that beautiful look of wool, but you get the strength of the acrylic now. And these leaves are going to go quite sort of fluffy they're going to fluff out fill out a little bit so a wool is a, again a great um, thread to use for something like this but you can use other threads this works in lots of different kinds of threads so I'm going to use my little plastic piece there and I'm going to stitch some loops over it so this is going to be the bottom of my leaf here this little mark this is the point of the leaf so I'm going to show you a few versions of this and what we're going to do is stitch over the plastic so I'm going to come down on the other side. Now you can either share that hole or come just inside it so we get a nice point on the leaf and we're just going to go over the top of that like so. So that stands up like that and that we're just going to do that for a few stitches and you can just move that to the side to see what you're doing. So we're just going to come down in a row either side of that piece of plastic. You could use a little bit of card as well Actually, if you want to, a stiff bit of card will work just as fine. You don't need to be able to see through it. So each stitch, I'm moving down the plastic. So each stitch is next to the previous stitch. Try not to overlap them. I'm going to do just one more, I think. If you do more, you'll get a longer leaf. And then I'm going to just come up next to the plastic there. And this bit's quite important. Go underneath all of those stitches before you take the plastic out. Make sure you're not catching the needle through the stitches. You want to go right underneath it. So if you just wiggle that needle, you should feel the plastic there or the cardboard and come through like so. Then we can remove the plastic. And this is where it's slightly tricky. So it all to help you can be a good thing. And we're just going to lie those stitches down. In fact, I think we're good. So I've just pulled that over. Can you see how that's just pulling those stitches down? And then you just put a little stitch at the end like so to hold them in place. And there we have our raised leaf. I'm going to show you a couple more versions of that because you can change that around a little bit. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing now. I'm going to use the smaller one just because I've got it. And we're going to go up and down. Now I've turned this one around. So I'm going back the other way. It doesn't matter which way you go. So just over the top, keep the stitches close to the plastic. Keep them close to each other. Work your way down there. I'll put a few more in this time. I just want to show you what you can do with that stitch at the end. It just changes the shape of the leaf. So I suggest if you're trying this one that you practice this one a few times. I had to practice it a couple of times <laughs> to get this right and have a little bit of a play with it because it's just that last little bit that can be tricky. Now if I put a few extra stitches in you'll see what happens with this one. Let's go one more just for luck. Back up as if I was doing another stitch over the top there. You can just lie that down, take the needle underneath. If you don't do this bit now and you take the plastic out, you've got to try and get your needle through all those loops, which is difficult. Don't pull on that or anything. Just take it underneath, hold your stitches, slide that out. And then we're going to lie it down that way. And instead of doing the stitch down at the end of that leaf, I'm going to make that a little short stitch. So I'm going to push that up. Now do a little short one and you should see different thing happen at the bottom. If you need to just guide that down. You can. So I've made that last little stitch really short and can you see here how it changes the shape of the leaf? 
It's got these nice little round parts at the bottom so you can make different shapes of um, different types of leaves. So if you look at this one here, it's nice and round at the bottom. This one comes in, it's like a little heart shape. And then if you wanted to, you could put a little stem on that as well. Just do a little back stitch along it and you could attach it to something. So they make really beautiful three dimensional leaves and they do look slightly different every time. And if you want to fiddle with that, you can. All of those stitches are just going through that stitch. They do actually move. So if you want to fiddle with it, you can fiddle with it and have a little play and get that sitting exactly how you want it to sit. Right, let's do one more because we can change the shape of it again. So now we're going to just change the position where we put our stitches. So rather than staying close next to the plastic, we can just come out a little bit. So each stitch just come out in a kind of a leaf shape. So just come away from the plastic there. You can see that. Still putting it next to the previous stitch, but just not right next to the plastic now. I'm just making a kind of a leaf shape with it now. And that will do less of this where it piles on top of each other and it will sit a little bit flatter. So you can have a real play with this stitch once you've got the hang of it. Let's put one more in. And let's see what that one does. So can you see that? It's a little bit wider here on this side. It's coming out in a triangle shape. So we need to make sure we come back through. Now I'm going to bring the stitch that comes through back up next to the plastic. That one needs to be in the middle because that's the stem. So do make sure you come up next to the plastic for that one. Underneath here. Like so. Hold the stitches, pull that out. And let's fold that one back and see what that does. So let's just go slowly. That makes a beautiful shape. And that one came out really well. Let me <laughs> see if I can finish it off nicely. Just going to push it in a little bit there. Change the length of that stitch to change the bottom. I'm quite pleased with how that one came out. <laughs> So just slight variations on this will give you slightly different things. One other thing you can do, I won't show you, but I'll tell you how to do it, is you can just bend that slightly as well. And you can get these leaves curving, doing really beautiful curves. So stitch over it on a slight bend and when you pull it out, you get this beautiful curved leaf. So let me just show you that on the sampler. So if you've watched my videos before, you will have heard me mentioning about sampling things and trying things out. I have mentioned it in this video. Don't do these stitches for the first time on your finished piece. You need to practice them. You need to just work out what it is you're doing. Try some different threads, see what thread you like, what works. Um, and then when you've practiced, then you can go on your actual one and do it. I do this process as well. Um, we do have a video all about this. Do go and check that one out. But this is my little stump work sampler one that I set up. And I was just going to go straight on the fabric and I thought, oh, you know what? I'll just paint a little background on it. And I've just painted this heart shape. And I thought if I do all my sampling inside the heart shape, I'll end up with quite a nice looking sampler as well. Now, the aim is not to end up with a nice looking sampler, but sometimes they do look great. You can look back and it's a little reference as to what stitches you've used and what worked and what didn't. I've got things on here that haven't worked as well as things that have worked. So just a way of doing it to, to make it enjoyable as well and I'm just going to show you one thing on here with the leaves on it. So this is me practicing those little leaves. As I said it doesn't always work out so the first ones weren't great. They were okay. Tried a little one there and I thought oh, I've got hang over this now and then I did three over here that came out quite well and then I tried some more over here trying those different methods that I've just showed you. So you can see how that process works. You don't have to get it right first time. Do have a little practice um, and see how you get on first. Okay, so thank you for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the turkey rug stitch, do check out this video up here. It goes into it in a lot more detail. And I hope you enjoyed the other uh, stitches too. Just a few stitches that you can use, but really, really great ones if you're starting out in stump work embroidery. As usual, if you've enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up, do share the embroidery love, and I'll see you next time.